Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. There's even a brand new Brigadier General tier where you can get a shout out on a Commander's Quarters episode that's dedicated to you. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Quarters studio. Welcome to the show. So this most definitely is not an episode that I was expecting to do today, or actually, you know, ever. Now I'm not sure if you've heard of this little card called Golos Tireless Pilgrim, but now Golos is banned in Commander. This is not a drill, this is not a joke, and it is right in the middle of the Commander Precons being spoiled as well, so there's a lot of things going on. But yeah, Golos, Tireless Pilgrim, is banned in Commander. So first up, let's talk about the Rules Committee's reasoning for this banning, my thoughts on it, and the consequences of this banning. Though actually, first up, just in case you aren't familiar with this card, which we'll talk about why you probably are here in a second, Golos Tireless Pilgrim is a 3-5 legendary artifact creature scout for 5 mana. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a land card, put that card onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle your library. And by paying 2 in Wooburg, exile the top 3 cards of your library, you may play them this turn without paying their mana cost. So about the decision to ban this commander, the rules committee had this to say. Golos Tireless Pilgrim has been a much-discussed card that is both popular to play with and unpopular to play against. There are many problems with the card, but the greatest is that in the low to middle tiers where we focus the ban list, Golos is simply a better choice of leader for all but the most commander-centric decks. Its presence crushes the kind of diversity in commander choice which we want to promote. You can drop Golos and add a few 5-color lands into a random deck and get all the ramp and card advantage you would ever want from a commander with no worries about your mana base. Golos' ability effectively reduces the commander tax to 1, and once you hit 7 mana, with Golos assuring that you have Wooburg and helping you get there quickly, you don't need to do anything for the rest of the game except cast spells for free. Something we always want to be careful about. We've talked to the folks in Studio X and they understand the problems created by generically powerful 5-color commanders that don't have Wooburg in their mana cost. We don't expect similar cards to come from them in the future, so a Surgical Strike now makes sense. We understand that many players love Golos, so we don't take this action lightly. In the end, the health of the format is our primary concern and we find Golos unhealthy. While Kenrith the Return King is a similarly flexible and powerful commander for good stuff 5 color decks, we see it as a clear step down from Golos. So that is a lot to take in, and I'll try to break down the important pieces as much as I can. Even just starting off with that first sentence where it basically says that Golos Tireless Pilgrim has been a commander that is popular to play, that's a bit of an understatement to start things off. And actually, that's definitely the biggest problem with this ban in that there is a huge consequence to it. When you ban a singular card like Hole Breacher, which was the most recent ban, that is a card that's in the 99, and yes, it is an expensive card, but it's only going in certain decks. And though there might not be a direct replacement for that card in the deck, you can replace that card by putting something else in the 99 of that deck. You don't have to just dismantle your entire deck. But when a commander is banned, the consequence is much greater. Because again, it's not just a card in the 99, the entire deck is built around that commander and the deck doesn't function without it. And when it comes to consequences for a ban, this has got to be the most consequential ban of all time in Commander. According to EDHREC, Golos is the most popular commander over the past two years by far. And it probably wouldn't be a stretch to say that Golos is the most popular commander of all time. According to EDHREC, there are 7,490 decks built around Golos. Even in the top 5, there isn't a commander that's even within a thousand of that. And yes, I know that some of these numbers need to be taken with a grain of salt because again, some decks are just on the internet and some aren't on the internet, so that number's not counted, so we don't know what the exact number of decks is. But again, for comparison's sake, comparing between commanders, it's going to be pretty reliable. 
So let's just say that 7,490 decks are built around Golos. According to EDH Rec, taking their average deck build, the average price of a Golos deck is $1,183.63. So again, by banning this commander and players dismantling their Golos decks, that is a total of $8.8 .8 million thrown down the drain. Again, I don't think it's a stretch to say that this is the most consequential ban of all time in Commander. When it comes to players' investment in a deck not only monetarily-wise, but also time-wise. Golos came out in M20, which was released in July of 2019. This commander has been out for well over two years at this point. And in that time, clearly, many players have built decks around it and invested time, energy, and resources into doing so. And now is the time they decide to ban it. Again, actions have consequences, and this is going to affect a lot of Commander players out there. Now let's break down part of what the Rules Committee said and really get into why this decision was made. There are many problems with the card, but the greatest is that in the low to middle tiers where we focus the ban list, Golos is simply a better choice of leader for all but the most commander-centric decks. Its presence crushes the kind of diversity in commander choice which we want to promote. Basically, the gist is this. Golos is most definitely the best choice for a 5-color good stuff commander deck. If you want to throw a ton of good stuff cards into a deck, yeah, Golos is going to be your best choice. It gives you access to all five colors, helps you fix your mana, and helps you cast things for free. There is definitely not another commander out there that can really compete for that good stuff five color title. And we'll talk about some other options here in a bit, but obviously there is no other direct replacement for Golos. If players want to build a more specific commander-centric deck, they are welcome to. They can just select another commander and build a deck around that commander. Certain players just like playing five-color good stuff. They like playing all their favorite cards in one deck. In fact, playing a lot of big dumb spells is kind of the most Timmy thing out there, and Commander is most definitely a format that has a lot of Timmies in it. Which again is probably why Golos was the most popular Commander of all time, or again, at least of the last two years, but most likely of all time. Some players just like playing all their favorite things in one deck, and that's fine. Saying that allowing a 5-color good stuff commander is just crushing the diversity in commander choices, I don't agree with that. And outside of 5-color good stuff, there are plenty of other Golos builds that are very unique and really revolve around Golos, and now they're just gone because of this decision. Yes, Golos is powerful, and yes, there are players out there that don't want to play against it. It's a commander that many players have, or again, at this point I should probably say had, and because of that, it was very prevalent in a lot of LGSs out there in a lot of playgroups too. To some, I could definitely see it becoming an eye roll commander, oh here we go again type of thing. But again, if you personally don't want to play against a commander, just talk about it ahead of time. Commander is a social format, so just talk. Banning commanders again is the biggest consequence decision that there can be in this format. Again, there's a lot of time, energy, and money that has been lost because of this decision. And taking out what very well might be many players' favorite deck is not something to be taken lightly. I think with what I've said so far in this episode, you can probably guess my thoughts on this ban. I personally think this ban came out of absolutely nowhere. If it was going to be made, it should have been made a long time ago. And doing so now is just irresponsible. I mean, again, it is the number one commander out there, and there are going to be a lot of players that are going to be hurt by this. Though another commander was mentioned in their post, there is no real replacement for Golos Tireless Pilgrim. That being said, if you are one of the many players out there that have been affected by this ban, let's talk about some of your options. And your first option really is just talk. If you have a Golos deck and have a playgroup that you usually play with, discuss with them. Ask them if it's okay if you can still play Golos as your commander, even though it is a banned card. Again, Commander is a social format, it is not a tournament format, and you can play it in any way that you want. If your playgroup is still fine with you playing your Golos deck, great. Or if you play at an LGS, if you're going to play Golos, just ask ahead of time. Again, you might be surprised, but many players out there are completely fine against playing against a banned card or a banned commander when you ask ahead of time. I know it's a different situation, but I personally have never run into one player that has not been okay with playing against my Rarity deck, even though Rarity is a silver-bordered commander. But with that, also make sure you have either a backup commander for that deck, or other commander decks that you can play. 
With a card being banned, you should be respectful of others if others want to stick to the ban list. If they're not okay with playing against your Golos deck, that's okay. Either play a different commander at the head of that deck or play a different deck. Just don't show up to your LGS expecting players to be okay with it and not have any backup options. And speaking of backup options and potential replacements for a Golos commander deck, let's talk about those now. The one that was actually mentioned in the Rules Committee's announcement was Kenrith the Return King. Kenny is a 5-5 Human Noble that costs 4 and a white. By paying a red, all creatures gain Trample and Haste until end of turn. By paying 1 in a green, put a plus plus 1 counter on target creature. By paying 2 in a white, target player gains 5 life. By paying 3 in a blue, target player draws a card. And by paying 4 in a black, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under its owner's control. Now first up, obviously, decks built specifically around Kenny and his abilities can most definitely be made. My personal Kenny deck, which you might have seen on an Extra Turns episode, was built around Kenny's abilities and not just around generically good 5-color stuff. Now, Kenny can function as a 5-color good stuff commander, but it does obviously not work nearly as effectively as Golos. And for many Golos decks out there, if you're going to be trying to transfer your Golos deck into a Kenny deck, you're probably going to have to make some major adjustments. Obviously, since Golos can help you fix your mana as well as cast big spells, if you're moving to a Kenny deck, you're going to have to make changes. Kenny can't do either of those things, so you're going to have to either add in more ramp or take down the amount of big spells that you have. They're going to have to be adjustments. And actually, when it comes to a quote-unquote replacement for most Golos decks out there, I think Joda is probably going to be the better option. Joda Archmage Eternal was actually one of my first personal commander decks in one of the very first episodes that I did on this channel. Joda is a 4-3 human wizard with flying that costs 1 blue, red, white. He has, you may pay Wooburg rather than pay the mana cost for spells you cast. So unlike Golos, Joda can't help you fix your mana, but it can help you cast big spells. Again, if you are deciding to change your Golos commander deck into a Joda commander deck, you are still going to have to make some adjustments. Most likely, you are going to have to add in some more mana fixing. Regardless, with Joda, keep in mind that you've got some extra options for cards that work well with Joda that don't work well with Golos. Particularly cards that really only work or give you extra benefits from being cast from your hand. So just keep that in mind. Again, if you are a Golos player, there are some options. And again, the first option that I personally would recommend is to just talk with your playgroup or those at your LGS to see if it's okay if you still play your Golos deck. Personally, I'm going to be utilizing that option with my playgroup and asking them if it's still okay if I play my giant 166 card legal commander deck with Golos. And obviously, if that's not okay with them, then I'll be exercising another option. Regardless, one other thing that I did mention is that this is just really unfortunate for specific Golos decks that aren't built 5-color good stuff, but they're still getting hit with this ban. For example, there are a ton of Mazes End Golos decks out there. In fact, Golos is pretty much the perfect commander out there for a Mazes End deck, and yeah, that's just unfortunate that it's now banned. Mazes End decks work to get Mazes End as well as 10 gates into play, so yeah, you need a 5-color commander, and one that can actually go get Mazes End for you makes it so the deck can really function. And also, there are some off-the-wall and quirky decks built around Golos as well that aren't 5-color good stuff, like Eddie's Upside Down Tribal deck. Now, I actually don't think I've mentioned that deck on an episode before, or maybe we have and it was a while back, but basically, the deck is just, hey, we've got 5 colors, we've got things with Morph, we've got things with Manifest, and we've got things with Fortel. Guess what these cards are? Golos was just utilized to give the deck access to all 5 colors and to help fix mana, and not really to cast things for free. So again, with a commander that's as popular as Golos, yes, there are a lot of 5-color good stuff decks built around it, but there are also a lot of other kinds of decks that are now just banned. I very much disagree with this decision, and I think it's going to hurt a lot of players out there. And I think most importantly, that if the rules committee had a problem with this type of a commander, they should have made this decision a long time ago. Over two years worth of players putting time, energy, and money into their Golos decks now thrown down the drain. This is a huge decision with massive consequences, and again, not just monetarily, though the monetary numbers are absurd. An estimated $8.8 .8 million decision. And actually, to wrap this episode up, a big thank you to Eddie for sending this over right before I finished editing the episode and I wanted to make sure I added it in. Just a few months ago, back at the end of June, Sheldon Mennery, the face of the Commander Rules Committee, had a Top 5 Current Commander Concerns article on Star City Games. And the part that Eddie sent over and pointed out to me was this. Also of some concern are generically good commanders like Golos Tireless Pilgrim, Corvold Faker's King, and Tulane Teller of Tales, among others. We prefer commanders that can lead in interesting directions instead of hitting every point on the compass. The good news here is that Gavin confirmed that they're also aware of this phenomenon in Studio X and will be doing their best to avoid it in the future. 
As I get into this short but wordy list, please remember two things. The first is that this isn't a doom and gloom scenario. We're doing well, I just want to see where we can do better. The second is that while these things are being talked about at the RC level, no immediate action or aggressive action is looming. Commander is a big ship and trying to do sharp turns is potentially dangerous. You nudge it in the direction of change and eventually get on the proper course. The big thing that Eddie pointed out here that didn't age well is the statement. The second is that while these things are being talked about at the RC level, no immediate action or aggressive action is looming. I'd say banning a commander listed here, especially the most popular commander of all time, is an aggressive action. This article came out less than three months ago, 84 days ago to be precise. And banning the number one commander of all time is apparently not a looming aggressive action. Yeah, to me, that didn't age well. And again, if Golos is being picked out as a generically good commander that needs to be banned, then why aren't Korvold and Tulane and those other commanders that you're considering being banned too? Again, to me and to many others out there, this ban came out of absolutely nowhere. And again, it's a ban that is going to have a ton of consequences.